What's up you guys? It's Susie from HeyGrillHey.com and I am excited today. <laughs> the reason I am excited is because I am staring down at this beautiful giant rack of beef plate ribs. That's what we're smoking today. I'm gonna show you my method for turning these into melt in your mouth, better than brisket on a stick. Let's do it. Let's start with talking about what kind of beef ribs I have on my cutting board today. This is about 10 pounds of beef plate short ribs. Four bones, huge section. You can see this is a mammoth piece of meat. In the past, uh, I haven't been able to get my hands on plate ribs this size. These ones came from Felton Angus Beef. Shout out to the other Susie out there in the barbecue universe. <laughs> Wait, those are short ribs? They're These long. are long They're short long, ribs. They're longest short ribs uh, I've ever seen. So there are two, typically two genres of beef ribs. You have the plate ribs and the chuck ribs. The short ribs are generally cut from the plate. The chuck ribs are slightly different, a little bit thinner. Both will work for this recipe as long as it's all on the bone and you have that nice big hunk of meat in one big piece on top. If you have those smaller short ribs, that's a different recipe. Google it, it's on my website. Uh, but this is for the big monster beef ribs like you get at those Texas barbecue joints. So that's what we have today. We have the plate short ribs. This is four bone. In the past, I've only cooked three. So this is the biggest rack of plate ribs that I've ever even cooked and I'm excited. But we're gonna do my classic treatment, give it some really good flavor, some really good smoke, and they're not too hard. So first we need to, well, I'm gonna put my gloves on and then we're gonna trim the top of these bad boys. Now these beef ribs don't need too much work. They look great already, but I am gonna take my fillet knife and kind of take off this fat cap on the top. There's silver skin underneath it that's not gonna render down and it won't be a great bite when we finish. Not only that, taking it off will allow a little bit more smoke to form on the exterior of our ribs. Since we have the bones underneath, we want as much smoke hitting as much of the surface of these ribs as we can get. So there is an overlap of a couple of muscles here. If I were to take this whole piece off, it would get really narrow down towards the end. I'm gonna leave it on, because I think it looks pretty good. So we're just gonna take the rest of this fat cap off here and then we're good to go. I could spend all day nitpicking, but I actually think this looks good. So take this trim, all of your cast off and your fat and your extra pieces of meat, and don't throw it away, please. You can render this fat down into tallow or you can grind the meat into burger grain. Like short rib burgers are absolutely phenomenal. So we're gonna set that aside just so that I can keep it for later. And now we turn our attention to finishing the prep on these beef ribs. I'm gonna give them a pretty traditional preparation with a mustard slather and a salt and pepper based seasoning, but we're gonna kick it up a little bit of a notch because I think with a piece of meat this thick and this rich and this smoky, it can handle a little bit of heat. Uh, so we're gonna hit this with a spicy brown mustard. I've also used a uh, Dijon and a horseradish mustard in the past, and I think it's awesome on these beef ribs. So just give that a nice even slather on all sides. Flip those over. And before I slather the back, let's just talk about the membrane on the back here. There is a membrane on the back of beef ribs, just like there are on pork ribs. Now with pork ribs, I like to remove the membrane. With beef ribs, I don't think you need to. The rib bones themselves are so close to the surface. In the past when I've removed them, the beef ribs have actually like fallen out of the meat. So if you want that final finished photo of the beef rib with the meat still attached to it, the membrane is actually gonna help you get that final shot. And you're gonna be eating the meat off the top of the bone. You're not gonna be trying to bite through the bottom of the bone where the membrane is. So I don't worry about removing it on these beef ribs. Okay, I'm gonna slather and season the back, but to be honest with you, you probably don't need to because like I said, we're not really eating this part. I think at this point, it's just a habit. <laughs> Flip it over, season all sides, but you could probably get away with not seasoning the bottom. Cause like I said, we're really not eating that membrane. Make sure you get your mustard on these sides though, because those will be the coveted barky ends. Then we're gonna season. 
with your salt and pepper base seasoning. You can just use equal parts salt, pepper, garlic powder. But if you wanna kick it up a notch, I really recommend using my beef seasoning. It is a salt and pepper base seasoning, but it has some other real goody goodies in there that make beef sing. Man, between the smell of the beef, the seasoning, and the smoker rolling behind me with oak in it, I feel like I'm in Texas. This is fantastic. Okay, make sure your seasoning is pressed on really nicely. And then this is ready to hit the smoker. We're running this in our drum smoker today, 275 degrees Fahrenheit because this is uh, a beefy thick rack of ribs. Normally I'll do this at 250, but I think this one can hold up to 275 and that's kind of where our drum likes to live. Uh, this is a no wrap, no braise, none of that kind of a cooking process. So we're gonna slap these on, close the lid, and I'm not even gonna look at them again for the next three hours. And then three hours from now, we're coming back with a hot sauce and vinegar spritz. Mm. See you back here in three hours. Three hours in to our smoked beef ribs cook and they are humming along. Now this smoker is cooking a little bit hotter than the 275 we were shooting for, but it's really happy at 300. So we're just letting it go right now. The smoke is beautiful and our beef ribs are currently hanging out in the stall. I think they just cracked like 180. So we are gonna pop open the lid and start spritzing. My spritz is very simple. And again, we're bringing some more bold flavors to these beef ribs. I've got a cup of simply white vinegar in a spray bottle. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of hot sauce and that is going to be our spritz liquid. And I'm just gonna spritz these ribs every 45 minutes or so from now until they're done. So I typically don't spritz a lot of my cooks, but since we're doing these beef ribs start to finish unwrapped, I think they really can benefit from a little bit of added moisture on the surface of the meat during the cooking process. So that's why we're spritzing today. Oh, that looks so good. lid back on quick we don't want to lose too much heat during the cooking process i'll be back out here in another 45 minutes to spritz again spritzy spritzy i'm gonna light you on fire Beef ribs are super close, but they're not quite done. And we were losing our fire. So we just added more coals and we're gonna let them go until they're done. We're at like 190 right now. We are about nine hours through our smoked beef ribs cook. It has been a challenging cook, I think a little bit. We were battling temperatures, lifting the lid on this drum cooker was not our best friend. <laughs> and we had to refill the coals halfway through, but nine hours in, I think our beef ribs are where we want them to be. Uh, our temperatures got up to just above 200 degrees, but more importantly, that probe tenderness was exactly where I wanted to be. My thermometer probe slides in and out of the meat like butter. The bark is absolutely beautiful. They're ready to come off and rest. Look at these monsters. You can see how much the meat is pulled back from the bone. These things are beasts. Before we can eat them, we need to let them rest. You can just wrap them up. I like to wrap them up in butcher foil so I don't soften the bark too much. Put them into a cooler or into a low temperature oven and just let them rest for about an hour before slicing. I've been waiting all day for this part. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Todd too. I'm getting cranky about this. He's been cranky about this cook. <laughs> Some cooks are challenging, but we just have to remember that we're cooking 
to temperature and not to time. Sometimes pushing through this doll takes forever. Sometimes you have to refill your charcoal or refill your pellets or keep an eye on your temperature. And that's all the name of the game. And we played the barbecue game today and I think we played it well. And now we get to enjoy the fruits of our labors. The meats of our labors, the meats of our labors. <laughs> I feel like I'm unwrapping a present. Here. Oh. <laughs> we almost lost her. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I mean, look at those. How does that look in the camera? These deserve a close up. Their moment in the sun, you know? <laughs> this is. It makes all the work worth it when you have a result like this. We've got some gorgeous smoke on these edges, incredibly juicy. I'm so happy with the bark. This is, I mean, they call it brisket on a stick, but this might be better than brisket. These ribs are so well marbled. I mean, it just almost falls apart. Oh yeah. Good thing these are for more than just photos. I get to actually eat them. That is a cook that you can be proud of. I hope you guys give the smoked beef ribs a try. Mm. I just got that little tangy bit of heat from the spritz, from that spicy brown mustard. The salt and pepper based seasoning is a classic. The smoke flavor is coming through beautifully, beautifully. I think I was in the middle of telling you guys to give this recipe a try at home. And then the flavor smacked me in the mouth. You're gonna dig this one. Your family's gonna love this. And I can't think of anything that says backyard barbecue hero more than a ginormous piece of smoked beef on a stick. I'm gonna just have a really good night now. <laughs> I hope you guys have an awesome night too, and we'll catch you next time. Don't, don't mouth the words. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>